Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at how to kill fury tridents. This topic has actually been pretty hot over the past two weeks I would say because of the influx of fury tridents out there. A lot of players are complaining that the tridents are too overpowering, you know the fury build is just too much to handle and I'm going to be showing you how I deal with furies or fury tridents in general without using a fury or the trident weapon. In the first build, we're going to be taking a look at the pattern Molot. So I have a screen up right now, um, giving you more details on the Molot. Uh, feel free to pause the video. Um, just in short, um, it has a 10 second reload time. It has a range of 800 meters and single Molots, especially four of them, are deadly. So in this first game, you know, we're going to be taking a look at a Fury Trident that's across from me. They're 700 and we'll just say 700, 750 meters away. Uh, Tridents only have a range of 600 meters, so he needs to get within 600 meters in order to actually hit me with his Trident. Or uh, let's say 620 because he is Splash. But this guy wasn't able to obviously get close and I am shredding him up. There's nothing he can really do about it except run for cover. So that's, uh, you know, this first clip. The second clip that I'm going to be showing right now is a similar situation where I happen to spot another Fury Trident and I believe my teammate to the left, he was running uh, a Griffin with uh, Molot as well. So we are both firing at this guy, we are turning him into Swiss cheese. His health is just going down, you know, I'm trying to get within range and once again I'm trying to uh, use my cover so that he can't fire his Tridents at me. As you can see, my teammate is shredding him up big time with uh, Molots, turning him into Swiss cheese. And once he's on reload, you know, away I go with my four Molots and I'm doing the same thing to him. As you can see, his uh, guns are now popping off and uh, there's nothing he can do about it. Because the uh, Trident has a 10 second reload time and it has a range of 600 meters. You know, once I was done with him, I spotted another Fury Trident across from me. He did manage to get his first shot off. But uh, once again, I started treading him up and uh, yep, Swiss cheese was on the menu once again. So I started firing at him. I think I did finally manage to get taken out, but I don't believe it was from him. I had uh, other players uh, firing uh, stuff at me as well. So I was taken out there too. Uh, now getting back to a uh, Yamantown map, you know, I spotted another Fury Trident across from me and I started firing at him. I had to get down to a lower ground though because I had a lot of obstacles in the way so I dropped down. Remember the range is 800 meters and uh, this guy was turned into Swiss cheese as well. So you know I'm trying to use my cover, I'm trying to use my range to outrange and uh, obviously to use cover uh, as well to uh, take out all the Fury Tridents. Uh, this guy I believe he did manage to get uh, maybe one round uh, of Tridents on to me once he got within range. But at this point, he is pretty much dead. Uh, he doesn't have any guns or anything as uh, far as I can tell. And yep, he got shredded and taken out as well. The next build which we're going to be taking a look at is the Griff or Griffin Molot. And this is kind of a heavier variation of the Patton Molot. It does a lot of damage from that 700-800 meter mark. I'm now going to be switching over to a couple of uh, descriptive windows here. If you want, you can read up on the Molot and the Molot MK2. Uh, for those that are wondering about the Molot MK2, the Molot MK2 used to be called the Molot T. So they changed the name on that. Um, in this gameplay that I'm showing right now, I did spot a Fury Trident uh, across from me. Um, they were kind of hiding, so I jumped and then I fired my Molots, hoping to get a more of an angle on that player. Um, once I had emptied out all my weapons, you know, I kind of locked onto them as well, just to make sure that I could um, easily track them. Uh, you know, they were kind of hiding behind cover there, and I didn't want another player to kind of get behind, and then I wasn't sure who I was firing at. But uh, as you can see, I'm locked on them. And I dropped down to lower ground so that I could get uh, that better angle. Uh, remember, 700, we're looking at 700, 720 meters uh, based on this uh, footage here. But the Fury Trident needs to get within 600, 650 meters of me in order to get that splash damage. But they couldn't do that, obviously, because they're not within range. And uh, I was basically turning this guy into Swiss cheese, and there was really nothing he could do about it. All his weapons popped off. Switching over to a game which happened on Shenzhen map now, the Fury Trident that I'm firing at kind of got a little bit too adventurous. Uh, they wandered out into the open and uh, it definitely cost them. As you can see, I managed to uh, strip a weapon off. And in this next game, I used a similar tactic as I did in the first gameplay uh, using this build. 
and that's basically to lock on my target that you know I spotted a fury trident and once again I'm using the jump of the griffin uh, to give me that angle down on that uh, fury across from me again I'm staying out of that 600 615 meter range or I'm using cover as well so that they don't hit me with their tridents and you know just the rain of bullets uh, hitting them is enough to shred those weapons off so I'm using range, I'm using cover, I'm using the ability of my bot to help me in taking out uh, that Fury Trident across from me. The next build which we're going to be focusing on is the Fujin Molot. So a Fujin with three Molot MK2 weapons. Again, I'm going to be putting up a descriptive in case you missed the descriptive for the other builds. Um, just pause the video and you can read up on that. Essentially it has an 800 meter range and it has a reload time of 10 seconds and you know this can be pretty effective against taking out Fury Tridents but again you got to make sure that you stay out of that 600, 615 meter range because of the Fury's uh, splash damage. As you can see here um, on Springfield I managed to find a Fury. They started to get actually very aggressive making their way onto uh, you know outside of the platform or onto the bridge but I managed to uh, strip them down uh, pretty good with my Molots. In this next game, you know, I found a Fury that was sort of out in the open on the winter map and I started firing at them, uh, shooting them up pretty good, turning them into Swiss cheese as well, uh, before they were able to uh, find cover. And that's the only thing that a Fury Trine can really do. You know, when you have that many Molots being uh, rained down on you, the only thing you can do is to find cover and to find cover fast because if you don't your weapons are going to be popping off very quickly. So as you can see here I managed to spot a Fury Trident on the platform and I pretty much rained bullets down on them. They had to scramble for cover and that's pretty much the only thing you can do if you are in a Fury Trident. Um, again a Fury Trident here or at least uh, I think it was a combination because I believe they had Zeus. Uh, they dropped down and I was able to uh, shred them up pretty good with my Fujing Molot. Um, the buddy had a Fury Trident who was firing at me too. So by using my Sentry Shield I was able to kind of block his teammate out and then focus on him. The next build we're going to be focusing on is the Carnage Zeus. Okay so this build is extremely effective at countering a Fury Trident because the Zeus has a reload time of 5 seconds versus the Trident which has a reload time of 10 seconds. Uh, both of these weapons have a range of 600 meters but you know that reload time does make a huge difference and just the carnage shield is able to block that first round of tridents which is great. So as you can see in this game the fury trident managed to fire you know that first round of tridents. Um, it knocked my shield up but that was pretty much it and I managed to get a shot in as well. Uh, if you look very carefully my energy shield is starting to uh, regenerate again. So again, you know, the first round of tridents hits my shield and I'm able to block it. So I'm really only getting hit by uh, those two rounds, which is basically equivalent to um, a carnage hitting me with tridents. I'm now able to kind of get closer and closer to this guy. And just keep in mind that my Zeus can charge up a lot quicker than the tridents can. And on top of that, I do have the energy shield to help uh, shield me from tridents. In this next game, I happened to be on Yamantau or Winter Map and I actually came head to head with a Fury Trident which is very rare, especially when you're trying to uh, get footage of this stuff. But yeah, I came head to head with a Fury Trident. Um, as you can see, they fired their first round of Tridents at me, but because the Zeus has a 5 second reload time, you know, I'm able to fire multiple times on the guy and eventually take him out. And on top of that, the energy shield. So even if I have a little bit of my energy shield left, it's able to at least block or minimize some of that damage coming from those tridents. The last build we're going to be taking a look at is the Griffin with Tolumbus and CRV pins, otherwise known as the Russian Death Button. So one thing that I really like about this build is the fact that you can use the jump of the Griffin, especially when you are behind cover. And all weapons for this build have a range of 500 meters and it's with splash as well. So in this first game, I happened to be running with some clan mates and we dropped in on power plant map. Um, I happened to see a Fury Trident um, across from me. Um, I was trying to get within that 500 meter range before I was able to uh, use my jump on my Griffin to aggressively attack him with uh, my rockets. So as you can see, I did some critical damage to him 
and I do have him locked on using my cover first to get my weapons to uh, reload and uh, once I have that I kind of make my way closer and closer to him because now I'm intending to use my jump ability to take um, that fury trident out so again you know I do get him within range he sees me but it's too late because uh, of that jump I'm able to uh, take him out with my uh, Tolumbus and CRV pins the next game happened on a uh, canyon map so again I'm hunting fury tridents once again I'm using my cover and my surroundings to get as close as I can remember 500 meters is uh, when you know your weapons can hit so I got within that 500 meters and I jumped I fired and, and nailed that fury trident across from me so again I'm you know locked onto him just so that I know who it is I'm using my cover so that he can't hit me with his tridents and then I get within that 500 meter range when I have my jump and when I have all weapons loaded up so as you can see now I'm moving closer and closer to him using my cover I then jump out into the open and once again nail him with all my rockets in the next clip it actually happened from the very same game so there was a fury trident that was giving my teammate to the right side some trouble um, he was trying to lock us down so I managed to get within that 500 meter mark I jumped and I was able to uh, hit him with uh, pretty much all my uh, rockets from my Tolumbus and CRB pins uh, effectively taking him out. So yep, that's pretty much it guys. If you found this video helpful at all, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Twitch. Until the next video, I will catch you guys later.